as if some of you thought a little thing like Football Manager 25 being delayed was going to stop me from doing non-lead to legend. It's November. That means non-lead to legend. This is the 10th year in a row we've been doing this. Nothing can stop us. And actually, nothing can stop us from doing the traditional non-league to legend exciting things that we do on episode one. So I am going to give away a copy of the game. I'll let you decide which game you want. You could have FM24 now, or you could get a pre-order code for FM25 that you'll get when the game releases at some point, hopefully in March. And the way to get the game, same as ever, there's two possible ways to do it. So two copies to give away. One, just comment down below, letting me know you would like to win a copy of the game and also let me know which game you would like. Um, or the other one would be to retweet or repost or whatever it's called now, the tweet slash X post announcing that this episode exists. I'll link to that down in the description below as well. And also, if we can get 5,000 likes on this video, you'll get episode two at nine o'clock today. See, we're doing all of the normal traditions apart from the suits. The suits are done. None of my suits fit me anymore. This is a compromise for episode one. Don't expect it every day. I'm not buying a load of new suits. And welcome to part one of Non-Lead to Legend. I'm Kevin. As you can see, I have been appointed as the new manager of Brackley Town in the National League North. Brackley Town have today confirmed the appointment of Kevin Chapman as the club's new manager. Eyebrows have been raised in the world of football at the appointment of the inexperienced 40 odd I love the fact that because we didn't get the new game, I'm actually two years younger than real life now. It's spectacular. And he's sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media for the first time at St. James's Park. Um, St. James's Park? Isn't that where Newcastle play? Interesting. Um, it's a long way to go for the press conferences. We need to look into that. Um, some of the questions I'm expecting to have to field, though, are why Brackley? Um, and, Kev, where's the rules to non to Legend video you normally do? Firstly, if you want the detailed rule set for non to Legend, I've made nine of those videos in the past. The rules don't change year on year. I'll link to the most recent one that I made a year ago down below. But as a general rule of thumb, uh, the rules are we start at the club in the lowest playable league that is closest to my house, hence Brackley Town. Um, I have an additional layer to that rule that basically says if I've managed the team before on YouTube, I can't start with them again. So Brackley Town are now the nearest club to where I live. I'll prove it on a map in a minute. Don't worry. We're going to have a map. And from there, the rest of the rules all kind of tie in to the one overarching. It has, we have to make our decisions based on realism. So if we get offered a pay rise to go somewhere else, we'll probably go unless we have a good real life reason not to. Um, and I support a different club is not a good real life reason. I'm enjoying managing this club. So I'm going to turn down three times more money elsewhere. That's not a good reason. We play realistic and we never touch the player search screen. We never touch the staff search screen. All our players are signed using scout reports or director of football recommendations. Staff come from uh, job, job vacancy applications that we put out there for people actually applying for the jobs. And we don't ever do anything that we've taken from real life. So there's no downloaded tactics, no downloaded shortlists, no real world player knowledge. It is is pure and realistic football manager. It's what non to Legend has always been. It's what it will always be. And like I say, there's a more detailed version of that rule set down in the description below if you want to go and figure it out because you're playing along for the first time. Um, and I know people will also be asking me, again, presumably at the press conference, how I've set the game up. Um, I've set the game up on an updated version of the FM24 database. So it's got all the up-to-date transfers, uh, squad lists, um, promotions, relegations, competition winners. Everyone's been aged up a year and contracts have all been extended for a year as well. The only thing that isn't done to make it look like a shiny new game is we haven't moved on a year. We're not starting in the summer of 2024. We're starting in the summer of 2023. After several weeks of research and trying to figure it out, there's just no way to have all of the data correct and the start date correct. You kind of have to choose one or the other. I did toy with the idea of holidaying forward a season and so I could start in the summer of 2024, but then obviously all the player squads and everything are going to be wrong. And all... Yeah. This way is better. Trust me. I, I tried to figure it out both ways. But as I mentioned, we are the new manager of Brackley. I promised you a map. 
Do you want to see the map? There you go. This is a map. I live somewhere vaguely in the middle of the country. Um, I don't live under that dot. Um, I just live somewhere in this kind of area. And uh, the closest club to this kind of area that I've not managed before is Brackley, who are down here in, I'm a, I think that's Northamptonshire. I guess it could be Oxfordshire. It could be Buckinghamshire. I think it's Northamptonshire, though. Um, and uh, yeah, they are the nearest club to me. Some of the clubs we've managed in the past, um, I can see a few of them. Kettering we've managed in the past. Bourne, obviously, we've done before, but not in non to Legend. Um, we've done Gainsborough before. Um, we've done Alfreton before, who are up here somewhere. We've even gone as far south as St Albans in the past, who are down here somewhere. Um, but since St Albans were a starting club, obviously Brackley have joined the uh, the National League North, where they have a little bit of a record for bottling the playoffs. That feels like a worrying thing to have in combination with my record for bottling the playoffs. So we want to avoid playoffs if at all possible. Um, but that's Brackley. My contract with Brackley, £825 a week. As you can see, that's far too far for me to commute every day. So I'm going to need a house. However much might I be able to borrow? There's only one way to find out. And if ever there was a year where a mortgage calculator sponsorship would have been useful, it's this one, stupid delayed game. Um, so we haven't got one. So we're on the non-specific mortgage calculator, um, which confirms based on my salary of £825 a week, I could borrow up to £203,775 on a mortgage. What does that buy you in Brackley? Not, not a lot. It's quite far south. So we've loaded up Brackley on right move with a limit of £200,000 and uh, the first couple of places that come up are retirement apartments, which contrary to some rumours, I'm not old enough to live in yet. They're for over 60s. You just saw I'm, I'm merely 40 years old. Uh, so the... Uh, the best, and by best I mean most expensive, that we can actually afford that's not a retirement home is this one, um, which is on Manor Road in Brackley. And this is a one-bedroom terraced house. I don't think I've ever seen a house set up like this before. It's literally a one-up, one-down. You come in to the living room slash kitchen slash staircase. No hallways here. No separate uh, kitchen area here. And then you go up the stairs, and the stairs come out directly into the bedroom and the ba the bathroom comes off the bedroom. I say bathroom, no bath. It's a shower room. And I mean, I think it's a new build. I think there's actually a little row of three of them with solar panels on both roofs as well. So hopefully that will reduce our energy costs. So this is our living room slash kitchen slash entrance hallway. I mean, it looks nice enough. It's, it's a decent spec. Worryingly, no chairs at all. You can see there where you do just come straight in, straight up the stairs, and you've got this window thing here lovely <laughs> exposed <laughs> whatever that is i mean that's lovely for the decor and um, but no chairs at all and as we know chairs do equate to wealth so no chairs downstairs i guess if we want to sit down down here we have a perch on the counter or sit at the bottom of the stairs presumably and then you come upstairs and as you can see the stairs come up directly into the bedroom where we have some decorative rolls of unused carpet which is very nice there's your staircase coming straight up into the bedroom and there's your door that goes into the bathroom plus you've got the little angled ceiling as well which I'm going to absolutely smash my head on that every time I come up the stairs. I'll be using this little window hole as a recess to put my head in as I come up the stairs. Um, no chairs up here either. Barely room for a bed, to be honest, and the bathroom is small. The garden is enormous. I can only assume this is a shared garden between the three properties, or is that a driveway even? Maybe that's not a garden. I actually think that's a shared gravel driveway. Yeah, you can see this is the driveway because you've got that bit on both pictures. So that is that that is the driveway. So there isn't a garden at all. Bottom line, I'm going to need to be successful quite quickly at Brackley so that I can get such luxuries as a chair, a separate room to put my bed in compared to my staircase. That that is I've never seen a staircase come up into a bedroom before and maybe we'll graduate to a hallway at some point or a garden. All of these things would be lovely. That's what one hundred ninety thousand pounds buys you around this bit, around this area. That is madness. This is why I don't live further south than I already do. That's insane. And I will, of course, keep you up to date with our house moves as we get new contracts, as we move clubs. But I suppose the real reason you're here is for the football manager. Um, and this is this is my boy, Francis Oliver, the chairperson 
who welcomes me to Brackley Town, who have a reputation of one star. Um, I couldn't find a kit on their website, by the way. I think I'm going to have to go down to Brackley and try and buy a kit in person because they don't seem to have a club shop online, um, which is always the sign of them being quite a small club. Media prediction is eighth, and they are fierce rivals with Banbury United. St. James Park has a capacity of just over 4,000 basic facilities all through, and um, their best period of success was in the 2010s when basically they got promoted up to this level, won the FA Trophy. Um, I mean, to be fair, winning the FA Trophy in 2018 is quite impressive. Um, for a team that presumably were down below National League North level at that time. Oh, no, they finished runners-up in Tier 6. That was National League North. Oh, no, it was 2022. They won the seventh tier in 20... Basically, they're on the up, and we want to... We want to jump onto this little bandwagon. This is their current best 11. And I think I'm probably going to be looking to do something similar. Rather than just plugging in all of my usual tactics, we want this non-need to legend to be a little bit different to the last one. I think it will be naturally because we're probably going to get more job offers than we got last time around. That was a bug early on in FM24. So we're not going to have that this time. We've seen throughout Wembley and throughout my Twitch saves, job offers do come a lot more frequently now that they've fixed the no job offers bug. Um, and also we're probably unlikely to stumble into a mega rich Burton Albion club too and get the easy ride up the league from there. So we are going to have a very different shape of save. And one of the things I want to do differently is try out a few different things tactically. I seem to have something, a reputation as a one trick pony. Well, there you go. That's made my mind up. I'm going to do a flat back seven with a front three that involves an attacking midfielder. No wingers. No wingers is hideous. Uh, let me know down in the comments how long you think this shape will last me for. Um, <laughs> probably not very long. The board want me to finish in the top half of the National League North, be competitive in the other competitions and build towards um, qualifying for the playoffs next season. And by the end of the five-year plan, they would like us to have gained promotion to the National League, all whilst growing the club's reputation and working within wage budgets, which, I mean, it's a club who are making good progress. We want to continue making good progress progress we'll have our meetings once a month that seems plenty often enough no i don't need a press conference goodness me i don't plan on turning up to any press conferences anyway and this is our team these are our boys um so first of all let's lock in that uh that tactic that we want to use so i guess we'll do a fluid counter attack on a five that's still not quite the shape is it we need to move that guy further forward um so we can do that so it's it was more I think the shape they had was more like this. I think it was that kind of shape, wasn't it? Um, we're not going to play cautious. So we'll, we'll fiddle around with some of this stuff. There's some of this stuff I'm going to want to change. Um, but if we have a quick look at who our best 11 would be, did you know you could do that, boys and girls? You can pick an actual best 11 and it will show you the best players that you've got at the club. And then from there, you can pick the roles and duties that suit those players as well. And it immediately gives us an idea of the kind of shape we want to do. I don't like stoppers. I quite like the middle of a three to be a covering defender. Um, a ball winning midfielder and a playmaker in there seems fine to me. You're going to need to be a bit more attacking. You can go to support and then a target man and a pressing forward. Hello, non-league. Oh, how I've missed you. What a combination for a front two. Um, so, I mean, it looks like it works. If we have a look how that fits in to the, uh, to the squad planner, we are a little light on centre forwards for a team looking to play a two striker system, especially because our only backup is probably going to be playing right wing back for us. I guess that's where he's... Oh, he hasn't actually, so he might end up playing up front. But um, we've got an old man in here as well in the shape of Danny Newton, who has played for Brackley before and has now returned, been away at... Uh, I mean, he's basically done the Lelujo tour here. I've previously managed Nuneaton, Leamington, Tamworth. He's, uh, he's, I mean, he's basically doing the non-lead to legend history tour himself. Our back three, they're all pretty rubbish and there's not really any backups. I mean, it, it it's questionable whether we're going to stick with this system. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We will, we will have a ponder, but if we have a look at who our best players are, um, Gareth Dean is our best player. I think he's the manager in real life. Isn't he? Is he the manager? Managers. No. Gavin Cowan is the manager. 
okay. I, in my head, he was the manager. Maybe he's the captain. He was all over the YouTube channel when I was looking at it over. He's been there for years, previously of Nunny and left Nunny and before I managed them on YouTube. Um, but he's now been at Brackley for a long, long time. I guess he's the captain. Alex Gudger is on loan from Telford. Is he on loan for the season? Uh, he is on loan for the season. So he's... Oh, no, he's on loan out at Telford. So our second best player has gone on loan to... That's, can we recall him? No, of course we can't. We might be able to before the season starts because that seems madness. When we're playing a back three, to have our second best defender going out on loan is bonkers. Um, we've then got a decent young midfielder um, who looks like he might be actually quite promising. There is Matt Lowe, who, I mean, he's an argument for playing with wingers, which we're not going to do. I mean, he can slot in at right wing back. I'm sure we can use him at right wing back. Um, and then our goalkeeper, he's only six foot tall. He's a little goalkeeper. Oh, and he's got that cobbler's stench on him. This is not ideal at all. Um, and then we've got this guy who's on loan from Solihull. I mean, it's a decent batch of players. The actual weakest area is the wing backs. Like I say, we probably won't use this guy as the right wing back. We'll probably use him. Um, but it does make me think, uh, is playing a wing back system the right way to go when our worst players are the wing backs? We could probably, although uh, to be fair, have we got any wingers? I guess Lowe would be a winger on one side. Roberts could play on the wing on the other, but he's not very good either. So it is wide players where we've got that weakness. We have absolutely no transfer budget to play with. Not much money in the bank. Uh, wage budget, we've got about £500 a week spare, which looking at the amount of money the players currently earn, if we're lucky, we can maybe bring one player in on a free transfer. Um, and obviously there's loans that we could potentially look at as well, but we've got to get our scouting up and running before we can do that. Um, we are maxed out on staff we've got a set piece coach when we're not really allowed one because we're rascals and um, but we only have one scout at the club so it's going to take a little while before we actually start getting any significant recommendations in we've got a head physio but no physio physio and um, so there's work we need to do off the pitch as well but luckily we don't have anybody who's particularly grumpy so i guess that's a positive thing um if we have a look at the season preview the media think we are basically an upper mid table top half of the table kind of team um i don't think we have anybody in the uh oh we do have somebody in the uh in the me in the media dream 11 gareth dean our 34 year old center back and captain if he's not the captain we're making him the of course he's the captain so he's great and i guess we build the team around a 34 year old <laughs> what could possibly go wrong i mean at six foot two only having 10 jumping reach is worrying i was i was planning on aiming a set piece thing around him but again when i was looking on the brackley website i picked a random game to watch the highlights they scored one from a corner and two from long throws they definitely seem like they're on my wavelength with that kind of thing um but we'll see how it pans out i guess we've got some work to oh i haven't even done that myself Oh, Wembley. First match, we're off to Wembley. That's that's just romantic, that is. I love that. Oh. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to start a career in non-league to legend. And I am giddy and ready to go. If you want to see me play my first matches today, like I said at the start of the video, 5,000 likes on this video. And we'll do episode two, nine o'clock tonight. And you'll be able to see the very first matches that we play on this year's Northern League to Legend. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Don't forget, there's two different ways you could win yourself a copy of either FM24 if you want to play now, or FM25 if you want the pre-order to sit there on Steam for several months. I'll let you choose. And thank you very much for watching.